Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're joined by Rob Ferguson, Senior Medical Director for Surgical Operations here at Intermountain Medical Center to talk about our recent announcement of uh, restarting elective surgeries here throughout the Intermountain healthcare system. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. So why has it been so important for Intermountain and other healthcare systems to perform these procedures to begin with? What was the basis of stopping them at the very beginning of COVID-19? Yeah, so about mid-March, um, as we were beginning to see a rise in COVID-19 cases across the United States in specific areas, um, based upon what had been experienced in other countries, the U.S. Surgeon General, as well as the American College of Surgeons and some other uh, national societies, strongly recommended canceling elective operations for various reasons. Um, social distancing was going to become key and important. If we were bringing many patients into the hospital, that would be difficult to maintain social distancing. Uh, the other was going to be to increase capacity in our hospitals. Mm -hmm. We had to make sure that we would have adequate beds as well as ventilators and other supplies to be able to manage a potential surge in COVID-19 patients. There's also difficulty with regards to maintaining pharmaceutical supplies uh, and other supplies that are necessary for caring for COVID-19 patients. Now, we've heard a lot about PPE, so personal protective equipment. Uh, we use a lot of that in surgery with gowns and gloves and masks, so that also had to be maintained. Uh, it's not only for Utah specifically, but we're a global community, and so the disruption of supply chains globally affects us here in Utah, even when we don't have high numbers of COVID-19. So all those factors came together for us to make a difficult decision uh, to follow those guidelines and recommendations for postponing uh, some procedures. And we still maintained taking care of patients with medical necessity, uh, time-sensitive medical necessity, emergency types of procedures. And this has been an unprecedented collaborative effort across all hospitals and healthcare systems here in Utah. I think that's important to note that it wasn't just uh, Intermountain Healthcare that decided to stop these surgeries. It was a state-wide decision um, that I know that the University of Utah and Intermountain were really early on to do this. Do you know off the top of your head too how many elective surgeries are typically happening on a day-to-day -day basis in a hospital, just so people can kind of get an idea of uh, that large number? Sure. The term elective can also be a bit challenging because many times um, in the communities when we say elective, they think of optional operations. Mm -hmm. When you meet with a surgeon in the clinic and you have a diagnosis that is determined to require surgical intervention for, for treatment to become better, then the patient and the physician settle upon an operative plan and then in a controlled situation, you're scheduled for surgery. So that's what the term elective typically will mean. So we average at Intermountain in a work day over 600 procedures. So across all of our facilities, we typically schedule over 600 operations uh, a day. So this was a monumental undertaking. Yeah, it's not like we just have five or 10 coming through the doors. It would seem like it would be a lot easier to control if those elective surgeries were no longer there. And I now know that we're opening up some um, elect, uh, procedures at this time. Can you explain why that switch is happening and um, why it's okay from a state level to start doing this? Mm -hmm. um, as the governor had discussed with a recovery plan, or a plan that had three different phases uh, across the state of Utah, each sector within the market had guidelines under which they should function based upon uh, a risk assessment for the state which was assigned different colors. We had been in red, which would be a high risk mm -hmm. scenario. As far as what that translates into with procedures in the healthcare environment, during a red, we would be able to do emergency procedures as well as some time sensitive intermediate acuity type of procedures. The same factors that went into why we would postpone those procedures went into evaluations on what is safe at this moment. So community spread of COVID-19 uh, was taken into account, as well as the supplies of pharmaceuticals, uh, PPE, and hospital capacities. So the uh, Department of Health 
in conjunction with the Utah Hospital Association and uh, key leaders from all the healthcare organizations looked at all those criteria and helped advise uh, what would be appropriate uh, with regards to surgery and procedures in an orange risk level. So now that we're in that orange risk level, um, what are some uh, surgical procedures that we are going to start doing now and actually getting rescheduled on the books for people? Well, we'll continue to always take care of emergencies and mm -hmm. urgent uh, procedures. Uh, we're also with, um, each of our facilities have operating room councils. Uh, these have been in place uh, previously and they're being utilized to be able to review the acuity of, of patients be able to assess the um, capacities at their respective facilities and look at the schedules to see what is appropriate uh, at this time. So we'll continue to do emergency procedures. We'll continue to do patients that have an intermediate acuity but are time sensitive and do still require admission. The procedures that will be different will be patients that have an intermediate acuity but can be done in an ambulatory setting uh, specifically, that means that they don't require admission to the hospital, even for an overnight stay, nor do they require admission to an extended care facility like uh, an LTAC or a skilled nursing facility. Can you give a couple ex of examples, uh, just so if someone's watching, they might know that their surgery could potentially apply if you're getting um, like an ACL surgery or if you break your wrist? Does, are those types of surgeries some things that could potentially start happening, again, since they don't require inpatient care? Yes, most of those will be uh, potentially beginning again. And it's difficult to label exactly what yeah. types of procedures because there could be a procedure, like for example, a procedure treating breast cancer. Uh, we were taking care of those patients before. However, some patients who would have ductal carcinoma in site two, uh, which is considered more of a pre-cancer condition, but mm -hmm. at high risk for developing a malignancy, uh, would may not have had their procedure right away. Now that may be a possibility. However, it also depends upon the patient's overall conditions, their comorbidities. We're looking at doing these outpatient procedures not in everybody, but in patients who are low risk for having severe COVID-19 illness should they be exposed to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And if cases of COVID-19 start to pop up again, we start to see an increase of cases again in Utah, will some of them potentially be canceled again, could we go back to red um, from this orange state that we're in right now? Yeah, that is a really, uh, that, that's a, it's a real possibility that that could happen. Uh, to make sure that we're not heading backwards, we're not going in a negative direction with regards to our supplies, hospital capacities, as well as COVID-19 spread, uh, on a regular basis, the Utah Department of Health in conjunction with these medical directors from the different healthcare systems will be looking at that data to assess, to see if it's safe to stay in orange or if we need to be back in a red or even move to the next phase of risk, uh, a lower level uh, such as yellow. That's really great to hear that there's a contingency plan on, on what could happen if we go one way or the other. So if I'm a patient and I am curious on whether my procedure is going to be um, rescheduled or I might qualify for this, how am I going to find out? The best thing to do would be to talk to your surgeon. And the surgeons are have the surgeons have access to their leadership and the directors at each of the facilities and these operating room councils that are giving out those guidelines. So they know which procedures and which patients are safe to bring to surgery during an orange level of risk. And the best thing to do would be to speak with the surgeon. And if the surgeon has questions, she or he may contact their uh, local surgical leadership at their facility to clarify if this is appropriate or not. And even then, the operating room councils will be reviewing those schedules just to be sure that we are still doing safe procedures at this level of risk. Uh, the announcement from the governor, I think, was last Thursday or Friday. I can't remember the exact date, but have we started um, some electoral procedures already or are we still kind of in that phase of calling patients and making sure we can get them rescheduled? We have started. Okay. Um, we were fortunate to have many of our protocols in place and have a structure in place that allowed for the reviews that were recommended to be done prior to scheduling these operations. So that already being stood up, there were some other adjustments that we had to make and there were 
multiple teams across Inner Mountain that actually worked throughout the entire weekend to make sure that we'd be able to take care of these patients as soon as possible. And so many of those patients actually began yesterday. That's great to hear. If I am not someone who is getting my surgery rescheduled right now, when can I expect to get a phone call from my provider? When can we expect to move further along that needle of actually opening up back all surgical procedures? Hard question. Yeah, well, I need the crystal ball <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to, to say that. Um, but as I said, that's going to be assessed on a regular basis. And so if it seems like uh, there are conditions that would allow for it, then the state would get moved to yellow. That would open up uh, other patients who are not only low risk to have uh, be, to qualify for certain operations, to be safe for those operations in that level of risk. Uh, again, the best thing to do right now, if one is unsure, uh, but in particular if you are concerned that your procedure needs to be done within a certain time frame, that would really be a discussion to have with one's surgeon. Uh, the surgeon would be able to assess the patient and determine if it truly is something that needs to go when we're still at this level of risk. And I think it's important also to note that if you're experiencing pain of any sort um, related to a potential procedure to call your provider, regardless of if they've called you or not for the scheduling, and just check in with them and make sure that they know your pain levels and what's going on, because that could potentially move things up as well, I'm assuming, if it went from not as necessary to an urgent operation. Absolutely. That communication with your physician helps her or him to be able to determine what your acuity is and the appropriateness of proceeding with surgical management if necessary during an orange level risk. Rob, is there anything else you wanted to point out to us and the community about this elective uh, surgeries and what we've been doing for them? Other than to say this has been uh, a very difficult process, uh, we like to help our patients uh, be better. And having to look at managing surgery in this way for public health reasons has been a challenge, but it has been amazing to watch uh, surgeons, nurses, directors all rise to the occasion. And patients, mm -hmm. how many patients have been understanding uh, with this? And I genuinely, having looked at the numbers from the beginning, I genuinely believe that it's because of these bold and decisive efforts that we've taken throughout the entire state in all sectors of, of uh, the economy that we've really made a change and, and done a good job in flattening the curve. And so now would just be the difficult task of knowing what are the safe things to do so we don't undo mm -hmm. uh, all the good that's been done to this point. Well, Rob, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And if you guys uh, have any questions about a surgery coming up, like Rob mentioned, you can talk to your provider and surgeon about next steps for that. If you have mild to moderate symptoms of COVID-19 and would like to be screened, you can also call our COVID-19 hotline at 844-442-5224. We also have an emotional health relief hotline available seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. If you're feeling any sort of emotional distress, need support, or just need to talk to someone, you can. That phone number is 833-442-2211. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.